Hello everyone and welcome back to this Realistic Progression Zero playthrough playing Race into Space where the leader flag has now shifted back to Lou Diamond who got credit for the EVA he just did. Now we did do an EVA in our flight which was technically before his flight but we didn't have the contract at the time so um, yeah we uh, he gets the leader flag back, which is actually totally fine with me, as I described last episode, because um, uh, sorry, because the EVA milestone payout is not very much. Uh, by contrast, the payouts for some other things for being first are quite a lot more. So I'm fine with his picking up that milestone, and then I'll hopefully get the next one. Um, see what else we can pick up. In the last episode, we ran perilously close to no money um, because I screwed up once again my um, <laughs> orbital recovery. Uh, but then we we quick rush built another firebug, um, launched it normally rather than trying to launch it into a sun synchronous orbit. Um, so then we did get some money. So we still have to launch a sun synchronous satellite. We have to launch an atmospheric analysis satellite. Um, we're going to combine those missions. That's for sure. Um, we have to perform an EVA. We still do have to land on the moon again, although we still have a while. Um, to get our duration record. Um, and it's also... So you don't remember me doing an EVA last time. We did do an EVA last time because remember the Kerbal started to flame. Um, but let me just verify that I did get that. Uh, yeah, EVA report while in space near Earth. Yep, we did it. Um, okay, yeah. So the big event of this episode is the fact that we're launching our Venus myth mission. Well, our Venus missions. We're launching two. Um, because I have learned to not trust my luck. Because um, my luck sucks. So we're rolling out Cythera 1. Then we're going to roll out Cythera 2 as soon as we launch. Um, on the tech side, only 57 days until we unlock lunar rated heat shields. And <laughs> I could try to, this would be, this would be a, crummy move. I could try to beat Sound and Fury's um, trip to Venus. But I, as I've said to him before, uh, and as I was just talking about Lou Diamond, I don't want to because the payout is very low. The payout for um, for example man, where is it? Is it not available yet? I wonder what unlocks it. Um, milestones. Human milestones. Wait, that's... That's not a milestone. Why is it under milestones? That's weird. Um, I think this is repeatable. Uh, yeah. I don't know why that's under milestones. Um, Pap, do you know why this is under milestones? Right here? Orbital Flight 1 crew? 
because I thought that was a routine repeatable. In fact, all three of these. Is that just because of the categorization, or are they now treated as milestones and not repeating? Because I totally missed that. Um, also wanted to check. Maybe they're right. First rendezvous is available. Um, all right. So we definitely we want to do this as soon as possible. We'll combine it. We'll combine it with our EVA mission. Um, ah, okay. Pap explains that it it is routine. It's just that the grouping it was under went away, so that's why it got put under milestones. Yeah, it probably would would make sense if if that were under a new grouping. Um, okay, but yeah, I think I I definitely want to do first rendezvous. Um. So, do we have anything building? No, we don't have anything building. Better remedy that. Um, where's our beagle? Uh, sorry, where's our eagle? Wrong thing. Eagle block two. So we're going to actually modify it slightly. because we definitely need more propell propellant to do a rendezvous and also we want to use internal RCS. Now tragically we still have to do this all with hydrazine so this is going to be somewhat heavy. One ninety two. 234. Whoops, oh geez. All right. It's a long burn time, but not as long a burn, burn time as Gemini, so that's fine. Now let's go ahead and. Oh, it's got electric charge. We just. Ha! Huh. No wonder the delta V was going down. Um, also, we now have access to better solar panels, which produce 31 watts, and these produce 156 watts. So, and they're fairly cheap. All right, so we want three and a half days of electric charge. So that's 530.53 times 3.5 times 86400. Let's try 3.75. So 171720 minus 138. Oh, it's 33. All right, so we'll put 40,000 in here just to be safe. All right, and that made it much cheaper. And it's going to be more cost effective to do this than to put solar panels on. Because this is only 404 funds for the whole thing. And one of those solar panels is 200. Um, now let's remove and re add the hydrazine. I like that delta V much better. Let's go ahead and put some RCS on here. fairly large RCS, but in fairness we're a fairly large craft. Alright, 
Now, how much would it hurt our delta V to put some more engines in here? Not that bad. That puts our thrust to weight ratio up to something saner. This is going to be a fairly expensive craft. Um, I could get by with rather less here, but that's okay. Um, let's ensure that these are on hydrazine. They are, but they're not at the right tech level. These are on hydrazine and on their, are the right tech level. Good. All right. That's totally enough delta V to get to orbit. All right, so this is the Eagle Block Two. Oh, and I bet the I bet that's firing at the wrong time. That needs to go here. Doop 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 doop. doop. All right. This costs ten thousand. All right. So Eagle Three. Let's start building Eagle Three again. Yes, this is basic. You're right that this is basically halfway between Mercury and Gemini. Um, so let's see if we already have something we can rendezvous with. Mm. Orbitron. 242 by 559. That should work. That should work quite well. Let me just check the fine print of this. First EVA. One crew That's fine. Rendezvous. All right. So I have to look at the fine print of that contract now. Um, nope, it's just rendezvous to craft in orbit. What does that actually mean? Uh, 500 meters. All right, that's trivial. Um, the one annoying thing is the fact that this deadline is so soon. Um, how long is this taking to build? 64 days. Ugh. Well, that's annoying. Um, hmm.
Okay, so we definitely have to launch the other thing first. Because it's already the 12th of January. Dang. Um... Check it down here. Um, Firebug three, I think. Uh, So it needs a thermometer and a barometer. group. Alright, I'm I don't think it even needs an antenna. This thing should have plenty of antenna. Uh, RT antenna. Two hundred kilometers. Two thousand kilometers when you multiply it by ten. So that's fine. Um, now, I don't think it requires anything. Oh, uh, it requires a solar panel, doesn't it? I think it requires a solar panel. I think that's all that requires, but let me just verify. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll spin up on RCS that has Delta Avionics. Now the major advance of this thing oops I hate when it happens is we now finally have service module now we watch our Delta V skyrocket Also, um, Saturn Fury pointed out that all this time I thought the 
Able Star's engine. Able Star burned for four minutes. It burns for five minutes. Um, so we actually have additional headroom on this stage. Um, hydrazine. All right. Let's verify that there's the same amount of hydrazine in each because I've had that bug before. But that seems fixed. Um, all right. Now look at all that glorious delta V. Um, last but not least, we're going to go ahead and stretch this out and see what kind of delta V we get. What's going on here? Ah, that bug again. I hate that bug. Sometimes the tanks just don't change. Uh, where's bug four? There's bug four. All right. Let's look at what happens here. All right. So beyond a certain point, we're not actually materially changing our delta V. Beyond four minutes, even with service module tanks, we're barely getting any advantage here. We can at least bring this back down to what it was supposed to be. Well, we'll stick at 47. Um, I guess we can go ahead and run this thing up to 50. All right. Whoa, that's a weird effect. Can we bring this down any? There. Okay. That all looks correct to me. Um... So you say it would be fine without the fins, but um, I've had these things flip out so badly. So I'm going to keep the fins. I don't need... I need 10 meters per second delta V less than I need the mission to complete. Um, that should be plenty of delta V to launch to a high polar orbit. And happily, this is not the first COM satellite contract. This is something saner. It's like 300 by 600. Um, this is fairly cheap, so it can get done real fast. Just verify. This requires... 300 by like 680, I think. That's going to be maybe 700. This I have another year on. This will be fine. Oh, I also should clarify this is transmit or return, not just return. I had to check that to be sure. All right, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and move this up. It takes 18 days. We're going to rush it some because I, f I feel like I'm always rush building but um, if it fails we need to launch something else soon. So that's fairly cheap. That's only like two th another 2 million. We doubled its price but we're building it almost half the time. Um, so even if that for some reason fails, we'll get it. We'll just build another one, and it'll be fine. Um, I could have switched over to the uh, XLR81-BA-7, 
the Gina B engine. But that's not been tested, and I don't want to risk it on the first flight. And we have enough delta V from this, so it should be fine. Um, so let's go ahead and deal with our with our Venus mission. We have to wait for the pad to reconstruct. Oh, we have 300,000 funds. That's nice. Has that pad finished yet? Yes, it has. All right. Let's go ahead and upgrade it. Oh, right, because I took the rendezvous thing. Uh, all right, so we'll have two level two pads soon. How soon? Uh, why isn't it upgrading? Oh, right. Right. Okay. Let's try this again. Oh, don't let's don't let's have a Oh, come on. Input locks. See if we can clear them still. Input locks. Clear input locks. Okay. Yep. All right. Now let's upgrade this. That takes a chunk of change. And it will take 145 days. All right, so at some point, at some point in the not too distant future, just over four months from now, we'll actually be able to launch two things at once. Well, not quite at once, but you know what I mean. Um, and the VAB will upgrade in 228 days. All right. I think I want to keep a bit of our funds reserve because. The Venus missions will not complete in a while, and we're going to need to rush some stuff. Probably going to need to rush Eagle as well. Um, in fact, we might as well spend it now, because it's cheapest at the start. Hopefully that was the correct choice. Um, I'm sort of desperate to do that. Um, it was not an instant upgrade. I'm switching pads. Hey, Sound and Fury. Um, you missed me building a half Gemini version of, of Eagle, so a 400 meter per second service module. Um, and building something to complete the sun synchronous orbit and atmospheric contract. And now we're about ready to do our Venus launch. So that's done. So we're launching two days early in the Venus window, but we'll have plenty of delta V, so it'll be fine. So here we go. As Sun and Fury pointed out, this is rather overbuilt for the mission. We could probably chuck uh, 300 kilograms instead of 200 kilograms on this, but that's fine. We're um, 
Let's enable some pumps. There's the last pump. Alright. And unlike my weird Russian missions, I don't have to worry about overfilling anything. Um, Sound and Fury, thank you for, for those well wishes. Yes, I, I also hope to be as free of agathornitude as you. Uh, okay. What's our alignment? Diametrically opposed. Oh yeah, obviously it's going to be a night launch because it's January. Um, what to use for a profile? It's been a while since I launched this launch vehicle. Uh, probably 140 here. Let's go with 150 actually. So we'll be nice and high. Um, still tragically lacking in comm satellites. 14 hours. All right. Staging check looks decent to me. Blowfish asks what mod defines the pump? Real fuels. So that's just a quick tweak. All right. Nearing our launch window. Oops. Uh. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I did not make that joke because I didn't want you to feel uh, in any way compelled to touch it. But yeah, is your wheelhouse. Um, three seconds to ignition. Okay, up we go. So yes, I'm targeting the moon so that we launch broadly into the plane of the ecliptic. Because the moon is on only f like five degrees off the plane of the ecliptic. Um... And for an interplanetary launch, five degrees is not a big deal. Man, it's weird how people say things and then it says they've joined. Twitch is weird. Oh, hey, Bill. Pitch program initiated. Can't see a thing. Oh, well, we can look at. Now we can see things. I should have done that before. I'm sorry, everyone.
Sound and Fury says, the other thing I find weird about my launch vehicles is that I always build to a sea level thrust weight ratio 1.2, whereas I, Sound and Fury, usually aim to be between 1.3 and 1.4. This is your inner Russian coming out. Um, because if your thrust weight ratio is higher than 1.2, that means you need more propellant. <laughs> Um, down to about 1.15 or so, that's when you really hit break even between gravity losses and, and um, extra delta V from the propellant. I mean, I always look at anything above 1.2 and I'm like yeah I should put more upper stage in there or more core or something because that means not getting the most out of the engine I could it does mean that we could survive an engine out if the thrust away ratio was that big but um, you kind of can't anyway because then you're you're burning the other engines extra and kind of redlining things and also you have to worry about um, staying steady. Oh, yeah, so Blofer says with solids. Yeah, with solids, obviously, you want as high a thrust weight as you can get to minimize gravity losses. But it's just saying, if you have the choice between launching... That's, that's because thrust from solids is not free exactly, but, like, kind of free. Whereas with a liquid propellant engine, then you can always put more propellant in. Alright, we're going to pitch up a little bit now, because we have plenty of delta V. Go for staging and ignition. Let's pitch up a bit more, almost to align with the surface indicator. Okay, the air pressure is very tiny up here, so let's ditch ourselves some fairings. Pitch up even more. So 3,400, that only needs about 4,400, 4,500. We have 5,000, so, I mean, we're maybe 4,600. So we have enough extra delta V that we can go for a slightly higher orbit. Pitch up even more. It is a dark night at the Cape. What time is it anyway? It's uh, 3.47 a.m. in the UK which means it's uh, 10, it's just shy of 11 p.m. at the Cape. Now it's clearly time to pitch down.
Wow. Yeah, the KSP clock is only a couple minutes off actual time. Man, somebody... You're up at 5 a.m. in Germany? Wow. Oh, Sound and Fury, I know it's 4 a.m. in the UK, but you're nuts. You're on the kind of schedule I used to be on. Alright, we're gradually pitching down. Alright, I think we want to go level at this point. And pitch down a hair. Um, pitch down a little bit more. So we're trading some steering losses for inserting it zero meters per second vertical velocity. Got to pitch down quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. Because as we get really close to orbital velocity, uh, it's going to get bad. So we're having to pitch down quite a bit. But, or at least we're going to be in like a broadly 250 by 250 orbit. Alright, let's try that. Oh, shoot. Uh, I forgot that I left this on. That needs to go right the heck off. Okay. This is going to be fine. Okay. That's fairly close to circular. Point eccentricity of 0 0.002. That's good. Now let's jettison the upper. Turn on the engine and the RCS. Save because I don't trust KSP not to do something weird. Um, let's see. Oh, let's kill our yaw. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at our Venus transfer. So, zoom out. Venus. Set as target. Um... And for some reason, the maneuver planner and node editor aren't up. Advanced transfer to a planet. Computing. All right. Let's zoom in on that. Oh, nope. No, we want faster transits. Let's look at this. Okay. So we look at this line. When is it going to be cheapest? 
All right, so we could afford we could we could beat Sound and Fury if we really wanted to, but I don't think we want to. It's not worth it. Um, we could afford it there. Oh, that's in 24 days. Uh, so no, right? So yeah, let's just let's just go ahead and depart. Well, I want to give us in, depart in, in. Okay, there's at any time. All right, let's get the fastest transit that we can afford. Which is going to be about there. That's fine. What the heck is going on? Why is our delta V decreasing? It's not anything that boils off. That's really, really weird. Our throttle's at zero. Our RCS is off. All right, I'm going to go to Space Center because that's a, a weird issue. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Literally the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Our mass was not changing. Literally nothing was... No, that was Mechjeb's delta V calculations changing without our resources changing. All right, we're going to save that around for. Oh, we could rendezvous with it. Um, anyway, let's go back to Sithra 1 and see what's going on. Uh, our Spark EC cosine losses in the delta V window are from when your engine isn't aligned. Oh! Oh, SAS was on, so it was gimbling the engine. So maybe... Yeah, you're ab wow, you're absolutely right. I've never seen that happen before. That was, wow. Well, at least we know what it is. Good thought. Um, that's exactly what it was. Wow, weird, but makes perfect sense. Uh, so let me explain it for anybody who didn't understand what was going on. So, SAS is on, but we have no means of actually controlling attitude, but SAS, because this engine was activated, so its gimbal was activated, SAS was actuating the gimbal, which changes the direction of thrust, which gives us some cosine losses, because the direction of thrust is no longer aligned with the center of mass. So that's what was going on. Wow, that was really interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and wait until we have a signal again. We're just going to go now. I could wait a couple days for an even better transfer, but we're just going to go now. Which means that Scythera 2 might beat us if it actually has a more optimal transfer. Um, don't cur. As long as one of them gets there, I'll be happy. Yeah, so you say you say you stick to KER, but KER has way more problems than MechJep. At least in my experience, calculating RO delta Vs. 
way more problems. Where are we anyway? We're right there. All right, so let's wait until we have a connection with Nigeria. Right, we're gonna let Mechjeb handle that burn. Let's orient to the burn manually because it'd be nice if they were setting in Mechjeb to determine how how wasteful it is with RC. I mean, wasteful is the wrong word, but how how quickly it wants to turn and in exchange how much RCS it's willing to use. Um, line up. Yeah, I think we'll rendezvous with this thing. Um, with our beagle. Well, with the, the upper stage we just burnt. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe the other one, because I don't know what the upper stage's orbit is now. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and execute this node. Come on, MechJep, line it up. There. For some reason, it won't quite do it itself sometimes. Okay, so interesting off-plane alignment. Um, what is that? What is down there? I just saw a red crosshair somewhere around here. Oh, must be our, maybe the... I'm just going to ullage things a little bit in preparation for Mechjib starting to burn. Okay, Lamont says there's a slider in the attitude adjustment window. Oh, that thing. Right, uh, right, sorry. Obviously it's going to drive its... Yeah, that was a stupid question for me to ask because obviously that's all PID driven. And there's no way I'm messing with the PID because these settings work for my ascents and I care much more about that. I can reorient myself in space but I want MechJeb to fly my ascents and those PID settings mean that my rockets don't flip out so I'm staying with that. Weird that we started burning somewhat early so we weren't actually halfway paced around the node but actually that must have been an improvement recently in MechJeb because it now tries to estimate tries to nail being right at the node when you've burnt half the delta V rather than burnt for half the time which is smart. Unless it always did this. Uh, Lamont, did I have funny settings in there or something? Those were the settings that I worked out last year trying to have MechJeb not flip out some of my rockets. Um, so. So it's very gentle with stuff. And it but it's, they probably need to be optimized in some way. Okay, half the burn done.
Ah, Centimere says there's a Venus Mars conjunction. Yeah, I really should have run this through Flyby Finder. Um, but I just wanted to hit this. I just wanted to hit Venus. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we could probably do that. But we don't have the antennas for it. Hitting escape. All right. So, let's look at Fine-tune closest approach to target. It is 0.9 meters per second. Why isn't it? That's silly. Um, all right, let's look at Venus. All right, what does what is this going to do? That is lowering it down. Alright, that's as close as we can get there. Yep. So... Anything else we'll have to correct mid-course. So let's go ahead and ditch this stage. Oh yeah, we have to wait until we're in contact again. Okay. Now let's ditch this stage. Free ourselves of it. Still broadly have the same perinapses. All right, now activate and target the Earth. Okay, now. That's not awesome. <laughs> Good thing KSP doesn't model collisions <laughs> quite accurately, because that would have been bad. Let's get further away. From, oops. Yeah, let's spin around to this angle. line up a bit better with the sun. Sun exposure 0.9 is going to be fine. All right. All right, that's fine. Now, we need to add an alarm for SOI is in three days. Three days, one hour. Um, and we'll go ahead and launch the other one. Yes, Tanivad is taking proper credit for that non-flickering PE. You did an awesome job. 
You did awesome work, Bill. You really did. Um, oh, I guess I was in, right. That was the part that I was involved in some too. Um, the intercepts is all him. Um, but the, the flickering was also, it was a bunch of integrator mess that I worked on. Sorry, uh, periaps. Well, perisithera in this case. Perisitherian, whatever. Perisith something. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I guess we can go ahead and launch the other one now because this probe, is, this happy little probe is happily on its way. Um, uh, yeah, so So the question is, do I want to bother? You know what? <laughs> um, yes, I will launch both probes, and I'll tell you why. Um, because with two probes, I can afford to dip one into Venus's atmosphere to try to get some high atmosphere science. Um, because the first few kilometers won't kill us. Um, so yeah, but I'm only gonna I'm only gonna risk blowing up one of them doing that. Um, so we'll launch the other one. It only costs like t ten million dollars to make, so. Let's launch the other one. For once, I was not Angathorned. Venus windows in one day, 14 hours. Ha! Huh, interesting, that. Um, except we'll probably be out of the plane of everything. Get rid of that. What was that? Was that a conjunction or a... Uh, well, we'll figure out later. Um, Alright, so... Recondition. Roll out. Yeah, so we'll be a few hours behind our peak Venus window. So, Specimens Biff, you're looking at the launch of first satellite. Technically, I really, if not for a bug in Principia, I would have done it like... Um, 15 days a month, something like that before. Um, and had I not screwed up some other things and actually unlocked early avionics faster, um, probably could have done it even faster. But anyway, that's min-maxing. I'm going to have to worry about that. All right, so this ascent profile worked fairly well. Um, I'll pitch up a little less, maybe. Um, and I, so I would have done I would have done the satellite whatever, but getting early starts on the buildings, I was really screwed over on my lunar launch because I didn't um, start upgrading buildings early enough. Um, because I forgot just how I forgot that they take longer to upgrade because they cost more because we're playing with 150 percent building costs. So, let's go back to targeting the moon. I mean, technically we could launch into the plane of Venus as close as we get, which would be the ecliptic, but we'll just launch to the moon because that's easy enough. We know that works. 
um, eight hours. So we're going to be about nine hours behind the window. Another night launch. Oh yeah, I forgot about the pumps. Well, when we come out of warp, I will. some pumps. That's good enough. thrust to build up. We are golden. Oh yeah, specimen if you I forgot you were launching from from Baikonur. Um, then yes, you're a bit strapped for science. Um, not terribly strapped for science? Why are we... Uh-oh. <sighs> Loss of thrust. Um, that's interesting. I wonder what we can salvage out of this launch. You know what? Let's chuck it polar. We should have the Delta V for that, and we'll complete that other thing, and we don't have to build the firebug now that we've um, <laughs> spent all that money to rush build it. Oh yeah, I forgot he was launching from Brazil, from from the the site that Brazil was actually going to use. Yeah, that actually that explains some of his progress much more neatly because that means he gets um, two moon launches a day. Uh, it makes ge geostationary much easier, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Sound of Fury says, "If my thrust away ratio weren't so low, I could save the mission." Yeah, that is probably true, uh, but. Whatever. Oh, we might actually even be able to launch... ...normally. Um... Hmm. No, we don't quite have the budget for it. Because this stage will probably end early anyway. Um, yes, this probe did just get downgraded to a commsat. Um, Yeah, we can't make... I don't think we can make... I didn't think we could make geostationary, because... 
we would have needed 2450, 1850, so 2450 and 1350. So, so it would have, we could have made geostationary if we didn't have a failure. They're still all at 83 minutes. <laughs> yes, this is an abort to spy sat. <laughs> Tenny Rar is right. Um, Uh, the gravity losses on this are going to be insane. Oh, well, we got some science at least. Not a total wash. So, like, range safety probably should have blown this, but whatever. Where the steering losses go to? Oh well. What ifs? Okay, now it's shut down. And another shutdown. I want to see if I can squeeze any last little delta V out of this thing. We have one left. All right. <laughs> that was scary. should have shut down the throttle before I did that, but I knew that the solids would probably force that thing to shut down. Um, Alright, we can ditch our fairings now. Let's pitch up. Man, that was tight. up a bit more. We're going to make this an impromptu Molnia satellite, I think. Or at least something close to a Molnia or a Tundra orbit. <laughs> well, um, yeah. We might be able to use Bug 4 for for the comm satellite contract, actually. Oh, that does mean that... We're definitely doing Eagle 3 first.
I don't know why they're called Tundra Orbits. Pitch back in line. Minimize our horrific steering losses. Oh, I thought it was something more specific than that. Yeah, I mean, they're basically, they're, they're the high latitude equivalent of geostationary because the idea is a geostationary satellite can't reach high latitudes. Um, so, like, for example, much of Russia is at super high latitudes. So to actually have comms coverage there, you've got to launch into a high orbit. Um, high in the sense of high above the North Pole, not, but also high. And basically, you, lo you have, like, close to a 24-hour period, so you spend, like, almost all of your time way up near Apogee. Um, if there were, so Undercover Yankee says who they were named after the Tundra series of satellites. Well, I mean, that would explain, because like Molnia orbits are named after Molnia satellites, so it may be that there were a Russian Tundra series that they were named after. All right, so we're at Yeah, so we'll need to burn, like, a bit of the upper stage to make it. Yes, this almost... <laughs> so technically, this thing is actually a Cosmos mission, I guess, by rights. Um, which, is what, which is what the Soviets called all the things that failed, basically. <laughs> okay. Not my day. Let's pitch up. We're 2.5 kilometers per second short of orbit, and we're already falling down. Our inclination's good. Man, I'm glad we didn't try to go geostationary, because that would have ended in disaster. Happily, we launched to a high apogee, so, well, high initial apogee, so we've got plenty of time to fall back down. Gravity losses are insane. We're going to need to pitch up even more, apparently, so that we don't fall back into the atmosphere before we circular. Well, uh, what, could I get away with 
no i think we probably have to do this we have to get down to about fifty meters per second down velocity just so we don't dip too far This was a hilarious disaster of a launch. All right, that will do for now. Okay, so at least we reached orbit. Um, and we still have 500 meters per second in the probe. So even if the upper stage fails to reignite, we're okay. <laughs> um, that took a whole 11 to 12... No, because we were going polar. That took a whole kilometer per second more to orbit than it should have. Um, all right, let's go ahead and warp until we have signal. Which is not, which we're not going to have for a while because we launched south polar. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be until we get on the other side, really that we'll have any comms at all. And we'll need to raise our perigee to 300 kilometers. All right, let's go ahead and change perigee at apogee to 310. That's cheap. All right. warp until we're near that. Whoa, that was freaky. We're aimed right at those lines, I guess. Oh, we can do a gravity scan. That's cool. Okay. Back to not having comms, but we can let MacJeb run the maneuver. I should have burned out to like 800 kilometer apogee, um, but because we would have had better um, overth effect at that point. All right. We'll go ahead and execute the next maneuver. Okay. Now we have comms again. That's nice. Always nice when we have comms. We'll lack it for this, apparently. So let's polish things a little bit. What? Okay. That's appropriate. Now, 
we want to oh we actually completed that's cool We're, we actually have the I my apogee was high enough that's great I did not expect that alright so now we get to wait uh, change apogee at perigee oh we can actually go quite high can't go that high oh actually we could because we can burn the probe too I forgot about that um, Convention under King. The A4 is not the most reliable of things, so I'm not surprised that you've got a perf performance loss on it. All right, now we have comms again, so let's do our science. And activate target Earth. All right, why did we not actually get oral perturbation, Geiger Muller tube, barometer, log pressure data? All right, and where's the thermometer? It's in here somewhere. Log temperature data. Why is that not giving us the contract? Oh, our apogee isn't quite high enough yet. That's fine. Don't care about that. Um, oh, yes, it, it was, but yeah. Convention of King. Now I understand what you mean. Yes, you got the. <laughs> I infected you. This what happened. Um, blowfish. Yes, there's about fourteen hundred left because there's like five hundred in the probe. Oh, we haven't actually done that yet. That's cool. All right. Okay, now it's very stable. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and burn now. doing on electric charge. Oh, we still have plenty. Okay. Burn that stage out. When is its hydrazine going to run out? You know what? I ain't got time for this. Oh, we're... Dang damn it, we lost comms again. And are not liable to get them back again for a little while. What is that line going to? We don't have comms. So let's go. Okay, now we have comms. Let's ditch this stage. All right. And we completed the atmospheric analysis contract. Excellent. Um,
All right. Yeah, PAP did awesome work with the contracts. And I hope everybody thanks them tons and tons and tons because they're awesome. Okay, so how far are we? We're quite far from Perigee. So I think we want to set up... I think we just want to go ahead and do that on the next orbit. Oops. Off. Okay. Now, let's warp to here. start burning. And let's see how high we can get. So tank capacity like. So we're going to leave some reserve maneuvering hydrazine. So when this gets down to about five, I think I'll call it off. Man, even with those big thrusters, it still takes forever to perform these burns. Can I get away with this? Yes. We're not wobbling too much from double time. Be nice if we if we could get our period actually fairly up there, but I don't think we can. It would be nice if, if RCS delta V counted because MechJeb's own RCS delta V calculations, I think, still only check for monopropellant. Because um, you can get RCS delta V, but it's only in terms of monopropellant. Can I push it up to 10? We might be able to. And that leaves us just enough to reorient oops, off. I think that leaves just enough for us to reorient to the sun, but we'll see. But if we spin around, it's fine. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just, I think we'll just leave it spinning. It's fine. Um... So our orbital period is three and a half hours, give or take. So we'll spend a significant time of it far enough away from Earth that we can actually provide some comms coverage. Although where we provide it is going to change based on the rotation of the Earth. What we really should have, we, we should launch something Tundra. Um, anyway, 
So that was successful. That was not the success I expected to have from that mission, but I'll take it. Um, Okay. So that will take about, I think, 1500 meters per second extra. I want to get some use out of this. What's our delta V like? Ha, not enough for that. All right, but we can add a kick motor. Don't cur. Um, almost could put that thing geostationary. Um, all right. So that doesn't materially change how long it'll take to build this thing. Um, We can go fairly equatorial for the comm satellite, and 1720 is certainly enough to push our perigee from like 200 kilometers out to 5 megameters. So, yeah, this should be fine. All right, so we'll actually get some use out of this thing after all, assuming it doesn't fail. Which is not a not the sort of assumption I can easily make. Um, all right, so let's see if we can do rendezvous in time. So with that, I think I should call things to an end. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'm glad that we at least had some non-failures. I'm not going to say. I'm sad we had failures. I'm glad we had some non-failures, um, such that we at least sent one thing to Venus. Uh, had, the, had the failure happened on the first flight, I'm really glad we had that backup flight, um, although we ended up using it for that other thing. So yeah, uh, thanks everybody. See, oh, I should sync, shouldn't I? OK. next time. I think we're at 15 now. Start 15. Nope. This was 15. Huh. Okay. I guess start 16. I can never remember what episode I'm doing. Whatever. See you soon. And activate Target Earth. Alright, why did we not actually get oral perturbation, Geiger Muller tube, barometer, log pressure data? Alright, and where's the thermometer? It's in here somewhere. Log temperature data. Why is that not giving us the contract? Oh, our apogee isn't quite high enough yet.
that's fine. Don't care about that. Um, oh, yes, it, it was, but yeah. Convention or King. Now I understand what you mean. Yes, you got the. <laughs> I infected you. That's what happened. Um. Blowfish. Yes, there's about fourteen hundred left because there's like five hundred in the probe. Oh, we haven't actually done that yet. That's cool. All right. Okay, now it's very stable. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and burn now. doing on electric charge. Oh, we still have plenty. Okay. Burn that stage out. When is its hydrazine going to run out? You know what? I ain't got time for this. Oh, we're... Dag damn it, we lost comms again. group. Alright, I don't think it even needs an antenna. This thing should have plenty of antenna. Uh, RT antenna. 200 kilometers. 2,000 kilometers when you multiply it by 10. So that's fine. Um, now, I don't think it requires anything. Oh, uh, it requires a solar panel, doesn't it? I think it requires a solar panel. solar panel. Alright. Um. I think that's all that requires. But let me just Verify. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll spin up on RCS that has Delta Avionics. Now, the major advance of this thing 
oops, I hate when it happens, is we now finally have service module. Yeah, I think we'll rendezvous with this thing. Um, with our beagle. Well, with the the upper stage we just burnt. Well, actually, I don't know. Uh, maybe the other one, because I don't know what the upper stage's orbit is now. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and execute this node. Come on, MechJep, line it up. There. For some reason, it won't quite do it itself sometimes. Okay, so interesting off-plane alignment. Um, what is that? What is down there? I just saw a red crosshair somewhere around here. Oh, must be our maybe the. I'm just gonna ulge things a little bit in preparation for Mechjib starting to burn. Okay, Lamont says there's a slider in the attitude adjustment window. Oh, that thing. Right, uh, right, sorry. Obviously it's going to drive its... Yeah, that was a stupid question for me to ask, because obviously that's all PID-driven. And there's no way I'm messing with the PID, because these settings work for my ascents, and I care much more about that. I can reorient myself in space, but I want MechJep to fly my ascents, and those PID settings mean that my rockets don't flip out, so I'm staying with that. Weird that we started burning somewhat early, so we weren't actually halfway paced around the node, but actually that must have been an improvement recently in MechJep because it now tries to estimate, tries to nail being right at the node when you've burnt half the delta V rather than burnt for half the time, which is smart. Unless it always did this. Uh, Lamont, did I have funny settings in there or something? Those were the settings that I worked out last year trying to have MechJep not flip out some of my rockets. Um, so. So it's very gentle with stuff in it. But it's, they probably need to be optimized. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> I did not make that joke because I didn't want you to feel uh, in any way compelled to touch it. But yeah. Is your wheelhouse. Um... Three seconds to ignition. Okay. Up we go. So yes, I'm targeting the moon so that we launch broadly into the plane of the ecliptic. Because the moon is on only f like five degrees off the plane of the ecliptic. Um, and for an interplanetary launch, five degrees is not a big deal. Man, it's weird how people say things and then it says they've joined. Twitch is weird. Oh, hey, Bill. Pitch program initiated.
can't see a thing. Oh, well, we can look at... Now we can see things. I should have done that before. I'm sorry, everyone. Sound and Fury says, the other thing I find weird about my launch vehicles is that I always build to build up. We are golden. Oh yeah, specimens if you I forgot you were launching from, from Baikonur. Um, then yes, you're a bit strapped for science. Um, not terribly strapped for science? Why are we... Uh-oh. <sighs> Loss of thrust. Um... That's interesting. I wonder what we can salvage out of this launch. You know what? Let's chuck it polar. We should have the Delta V for that, and we'll complete that other thing, and we don't have to build the firebug now that we've um, <laughs> spent all that money to rush build it. Oh yeah, I forgot he was launching from Brazil, from from the the site that Brazil was actually going to use. Yeah, that actually that explains some of his progress much more neatly because that means he gets um, two moon launches a day. Uh, it makes ge geostationary much easier. All sorts of stuff. <laughs> Sound and Fury says, "If my thrust away ratio weren't so low, I could save the mission." Yeah, that is probably true, uh, but. Whatever. Ugh. Well, that's annoying. Um... Okay, so we definitely have to launch the other thing first. Because it's already the 12th of January. Dang. Um... Chuck it down here. Um, 
Firebug 3, I think. So it needs a thermometer and a barometer. group. Alright, I don't think it even needs an antenna. This thing should have plenty of antenna. Uh, RT antenna. 200 kilometers. We could afford it there. Oh, that's in 24 days. Uh, so no, so yeah, let's just let's just go ahead and depart. Why well, won't it give us in, depart in, in? Okay, there's at any time. All right, let's get the fastest transit that we can afford. Which is going to be about there. That's fine. What the heck is going on? Why is our delta V decreasing? It's not anything that boils off. That's really, really weird. Our throttle's at zero. Our RCS is off. All right, I'm going to go to Space Center because that's a, a weird issue. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Literally the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Our mass was not changing. Literally nothing was... No, that was Mechjeb's delta V calculations changing without our resources changing. All right, we're going to save that around for Oh, we could rendezvous with it. Um, anyway, let's go back to Sithra 1 and see what's going on. Uh, our Spark EC cosine losses in the delta V window are from when your engine isn't aligned. Oh! Oh, SAS was on, so it was gimbling the engine. So maybe... Yeah, you're ab wow, you're absolutely right. I've never seen that happen before. That was, wow. Well, at least we know what it is. Good thought. All right, we're gonna need to pitch up even more apparently so that we don't fall back into the atmosphere before we circulate. Well, uh, what... 
could i get away with no i think we probably have to do this we have to get down to about fifty meters per second down velocity just so we don't dip too far This was a hilarious disaster of a launch. All right, that will do for now. So at least we reached orbit. Um, and we still have 500 meters per second in the probe. So even if the upper stage fails to reignite, we're OK. <laughs> um, that took a whole 11 to 12. No, because we were going polar. That took a whole kilometer per second more to orbit than it should have. Um, all right, let's go ahead and warp until we have signal. Which is not, which we're not going to have for a while because we launched south polar. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be until we get on the other side, really that will have any comms at all. And we'll need to raise our perigee to 300 kilometers. All right, let's have plenty of antenna. Uh, RT antenna, 200 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers when you multiply it by 10. So that's fine. Um, now, I don't think it requires anything. Oh, uh, it requires a solar panel, doesn't it? I think it requires a solar panel. solar panel. All right. Um, I think that's all that requires. But let me just Verify. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll spin up on RCS that has Delta avionics. Now, the major advance of this thing, oops, I hate when it happens is we now finally have service module. <sighs> it 
now we watch our delta V skyrocket. Also, um, Sound and Fury pointed out that all this time I thought the Able Star's engine, Able Star burned for four minutes. It burns for five minutes. Um, we also should clarify this is transmit or return, not just return. I had to check that to be sure. All right, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and move this up takes 18 days, we're going to rush it some because I, f I feel like I'm always rush building, but um, if it fails we need to launch something else soon. So that's fairly cheap. That's only like two th another 2 million. We doubled its price but we're building it almost half the time. Um, so even if that for some reason fails we'll get it. We'll just build another one. And it'll be fine. Um, I could have switched over to the uh, XLR81 BA-7 the Gina B engine, but that's not been tested and I don't want to risk it on the first flight and we have enough Delta V from this so it should be fine. Um, so let's go ahead and deal with our with our Venus mission. to wait for the pad to reconstruct. Oh, we have 300,000 funds. That's nice. Has that pad finished yet? Yes, it has. All right. Let's go ahead and upgrade it. Oh, right, because I took the rendezvous thing. Uh, all right, so we'll have two level two pads soon. How soon? Uh, why isn't it upgrading? Oh, right. Right. Okay. Let's try this again. Oh, don't let's don't let's have a oh come on input locks see if we can clear them still input locks clear input locks just verify. This requires 300 by like 680 I think. That's going to be maybe 700. This I have another year on. This will be fine. We also should clarify this is transmit or return not just return. I had to check that to be sure. Alright, so that's cool. Now let's go ahead and move this up. It takes 18 days. We're going to rush it some because I, f I feel like I'm always rush building, but um, if it fails, we need to launch something else soon. So that's fairly cheap. That's only like Two th another two million. We doubled its price, but we're building it almost half the time. Um, so even if that for some reason fails, we'll get it. We'll just build another one. And it'll be fine. 
Um, I could have switched over to the uh, XLR81 BA 7, the Gina B engine, but that's not been tested, and I don't want to risk it on the first flight. And we have enough delta V from this, so it should be fine. Um, so let's go ahead and deal with our with our Venus mission. So we have to wait for the pad to reconstruct. Oh, we have 300,000 funds. That's nice. Has that pad finished yet? Yes, it has. All right. Let's go ahead and upgrade it. Oh, right, because I took the rendezvous thing. Uh, all right, so we'll have two level two pads soon. How soon? Uh... Why isn't it upgrading? Oh, right. Right. Okay. Let's try this again. Um, launched it normally rather than trying to launch it into a sun-synchronous orbit. Um, so then we did get some money. So we still have to launch a sun synchronous satellite. We have to launch an atmospheric analysis satellite. Um, we're going to combine those missions. That's for sure. Um, we have to perform an EVA. We still do have to land on the moon again, although we still have a while. Um, to get our duration record. Um, and it's also so you don't remember me doing an EVA last time. We did do an EVA last time because remember the Kerbal started to flame. Um, but let me just verify that I did get that. Uh, yeah, EVA report while in space near Earth. Yep, we did it. Um, okay, yeah. So, the big event of this episode is the fact that we're launching our Venus myth mission. Well, our Venus missions. We're launching two. Um, because I have learned to not trust my luck. Um, my luck sucks. So we're rolling out Cythera 1. Then we're going to roll out Cythera 2 as soon as we launch. Um, on the tech side, only 57 days until we unlock lunar rated heat shields. And I could try to this would be this would be a crummy move. I could try to beat Sound and Fury's um trip to Venus. But I as I've said to him before, uh and as I was just talking to Lou Diamond, I don't want to because the payout is very low. The payout for um for example Man, where is it? Is it not available yet? I wonder what unlocks it. Um, milestones. Human milestones. 500. We have 5,000. So, I mean, we're maybe 4,600. So we have enough extra delta V that we can go for a slightly higher orbit. Pitch up even more. It is a dark night at the Cape. What 
what time is it anyway? It's uh, 3.47 a.m. in the UK, which means it's uh, 10, it's just shy of 11 p.m. at the Cape. Now it's clearly time to pitch down. Wow. Yeah, the KSP clock is only a couple of minutes off actual time. Man, somebody... You're up at 5 a.m. in Germany? Wow. Oh, Sound and Fury, I know it's 4 a.m. in the UK, but you're nuts. <laughs> you're on the kind of schedule I used to be. Gradually pitching down. All right, I think we want to go level at this point. down a hair. <laughs> um, pitch down. It only costs like t $10 million to make, so... Launch the other one. For once, I was not Angathorned. <laughs> Venus windows in one day, 14 hours. Huh, interesting that. Um, except we'll probably be out of the plane of everything. Get rid of that. What was that? Was that a conjunction or a... Uh, well, we'll figure out later. Um, all right, so recondition. Roll out. Yeah, so we'll be a few hours behind our peak Venus window. So, Specimens Biff, you're looking at the launch of first satellite. Technically, I really, if not for a bug in Principia, I would have done it like... Um, 15 days a month, something like that before. Um, and had I not screwed up some other things and actually unlocked early avionics faster, um, probably could have done it even faster. But anyway, that's min-maxing. I don't have to worry about that. All right, so this ascent profile worked fairly well. Um, I'll pitch up a little less, maybe. Um, and I, 
so I would have done I would have done the satellite whatever, but getting early starts on the buildings, I was really screwed over on my lunar launch because I didn't um, start upgrading buildings early enough. Um, because I forgot just how I forgot that they take longer to upgrade because they cost more because we're playing with 150% building costs. So let's go back to targeting the moon. I mean, technically we could launch into the plane of Venus as close as we get, which would be the ecliptic, but we'll just launch to the moon because that's easy enough. We know that works. Um, Ada. All right, I think we want to go level at this point. And pitch down a hair. <laughs> um, pitch down a little bit more. So we're trading some steering losses for inserting it zero meters per second vertical velocity. Gotta pitch down quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. Because as we get really close to orbital velocity, uh, it's going to get bad. So we're having to pitch down quite a bit. But, or at least we're going to be in like a broadly 250 by 250 orbit. Alright, let's try that. Oh, shoot. Uh, I forgot that I left this on. That needs to go right the heck off. Okay. This is going to be fine. Okay. That's fairly close to circular. Point eccentricity of 0 0.002. That's good. Now let's jettison the upper. Turn on the engine and the RCS. Save because I don't trust KSP not to do something weird. Um, let's see. Let's kill our yaw. All right, so this is the Eagle Block Two. Oh, and I bet the I bet that's firing at the wrong time. That needs to go here. Doop 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 doop. All right. It's cost ten thousand. All right. So Eagle Three. Let's start building Eagle Three again. Yes, this is basic. You're right that this is basically halfway between Mercury and Gemini. Um, so let's see if we already have something we can rendezvous with. Mm. 
Orbitron. 242 by 559. That should work. That should work quite well. Just check the fine print of this. First EVA. One crew member. That's fine. Rendezvous. All right. So I have to look at the fine print of that contract now. Um, nope, it's just rendezvous to craft in orbit. What does that actually mean? Uh, 500 meters. All right, that's trivial. Um, the one annoying thing is the fact that this deadline is so soon. Okay, Lamont says there's a slider in the attitude adjustment window. Oh, that thing. Right, uh, right, sorry. Obviously it's going to drive its... Yeah, that was a stupid question for me to ask because obviously that's all PID-driven. And there's no way I'm messing with the PID because these settings work for my ascents and I care much more about that. I can reorient myself in space, but I want MacJeb to fly my ascents and those PID settings mean that my rockets don't flip out. So I'm staying with that. Weird that we started burning somewhat early so we weren't actually halfway paste around the node, but actually that must have been an improvement recently in MechJeb because it now tries to estimate, tries to nail being right at the node when you've burnt half the delta V rather than burnt for half the time, which is smart. Unless it always did this. Uh, Lamont, did I have funny settings in there or something? Those were the settings that I worked out last year trying to have MechJeb not flip out some of my rockets. Um, so. So it's very gentle with stuff and it but it's they probably need to be optimized in some way. Okay, half the burn done. Senator says there's a Venus Mars conjunction. Convention or King. Now I understand what you mean. Yes, you got the. <laughs> I infected you. That's what happened. Um. Blowfish, yes. There's 
about 1,400 left, because there's like 500 in the probe. Oh, we haven't actually done that yet. That's cool. All right. Okay, now it's very stable. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and burn now. How are we doing on electric charge? Oh, we still have plenty. Okay. Burn that stage out. When is its hydrazine going to run out? You know what? I ain't got time for this. Oh, we're... <laughs> Dang, damn it. We lost comms again. and are not liable to get them back again for a little while. What is that line going to? We don't have comms. So what's going? Okay, now we have comms. Let's ditch the stage. All right. And we completed the atmospheric analysis contract. Excellent. Um, all right. Yeah, PAP did awesome work with the contracts. And I hope everybody thanks them tons and tons and tons because they're awesome. Um, No, we don't quite have the budget for it. Because this stage will probably end early anyway. Um, yes, this probe did just get downgraded to a commsat. Um, Yeah, we can't make... I don't think we can make... I didn't think we could make geostationary because we would have needed 2450, 1850, so 2450 and 1350. So, so it would have... We could have made geostationary if we didn't have a failure. Still all at 83 minutes. <laughs> yes, this is an abort to spy sat. <laughs> Tenny Rar is right. Um, Uh, the gravity losses on this are going to be insane. Oh, 
Oh, well, we got some science at least. Not a total wash. So, like, range safety probably should have blown this, but whatever. Look at the steering losses go, too. Oh, well. Whatevs. Our inclination's good. Man, I'm glad we didn't try to go geostationary, because that would have ended in disaster. Happily, we launched to a high apogee, so, well, high initial apogee, so we've got plenty of time to fall back down. Gravity losses are insane. We're going to need to pitch up even more, apparently. So that we don't fall back into the atmosphere before we circulate. Well, uh, what, could I get away with... No, I think we probably have to do this. We have to get down to about 50 meters per second down velocity, just so we don't dip too far. This was a hilarious disaster of a launch. All right, that will do for now. Don't let's don't let's have a Oh come on. Input locks. See if we can clear them still. Input locks. Clear input locks. Okay. Yep. All right. Now let's upgrade this. That takes a chunk of change. And it will take 145 days. All right, so at some point some point in the not too distant future, just over 4 months from now, we'll actually be able to launch two things at once. Well, not quite at once, but you know what I mean. Um and the VA B will upgrade in 228 days. All right. I think I want to keep a bit of our funds reserve because the Venus missions will not complete in a while, and we're going to need to rush some stuff. Probably going to need to rush Eagle as well. Um, in fact, we might as well spend it now because it's cheapest at the start. All right, 
hopefully that was the correct choice. Um, I'm sort of desperate to do that. Um, it was not an instant upgrade. I'm switching pads. Hey, Sound and Fury. Um, you missed me building a half Gemini version of, of Eagle, so a 400 meter per second service module. Um, and building something to complete the sun synchronous orbit and atmospheric contract. And now we're about ready to do our Venus launch. So that's done. So we're launching two days early in the Venus window, but we'll have plenty of Delta V, so it'll be fine. So here we go. can't see a thing. Oh, well we can look at... Now we can see things. I should have done that before. I'm sorry, everyone. Sound and Fury says, the other thing I find weird about my launch vehicles is that I always build to a sea level thrust weight ratio of 1.2, whereas I, Sound and Fury, usually aim to be between 1.3 and 1.4. This is your inner Russian coming out. Um, because if your thrust weight ratio is higher than 1.2, that means you need more propellant. <laughs> um, down to about 1.15 five or so, that's when you really hit break even between gravity losses and and um, extra delta V from the propellant. I mean I always look at anything above one point two and I'm like, yeah, I should put more upper stage in there. Or more core or something because that means not getting the most out of the engine I could. It does mean that we could survive an engine out if the thrust away ratio was that big, but um, you kind of can't anyway because then you're, you're burning the other engines extra and kind of redlining things and also you have to worry about um, staying steady. Oh, yeah, so Blofer says with solids. Yeah, with solids, obviously, you want as high a thrust weight ratio as you can get to minimize gravity losses. But it's just saying, if you have the choice between launching... That's, that's because thrust from solids is not free exactly, but, like, kind of free. Whereas with a liquid propellant engine, then you can always put more propellant in. 